Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna start figuring out what I'm gonna be doing here. I'm just going through the notes that came with the thing, and then it says we're going to watch this gas electric, basically the glass and electric video up to the point of ready to put in the new unit. So we're going to basically use that to figure out how to remove the old one. So um, I've got my laptop here on the workbench and we're gonna pull up this video and see what they've got to say. Okay, beginning to watch their video and we'll do some stuff here. All right, first of all, we're gonna turn off our gas supply. Okay, took off the recall box here, and then it says to take off the uh, 12 volt and get it all labeled. So we're gonna take these off the control board right here. Okay, so I've got both things unplugged here from the electric, and then I've got some really stupid looking labels here, but one for the 12 volt uh, power and the other for the control ground. Just gonna label these things as I go so I don't lose track of what's happening. Now, one thing I'm looking at, and this is why it's always different when you're doing it in real life, is that I've, their video doesn't show the recall box, and yet I've got one. So I gotta trace these wires and see if maybe we need to use these powers to go into the new board, because we're obviously not gonna need the recall box anymore. Um, so let me figure this out. So I pulled these three wires off the recall box. I'm not gonna miss this thing one damn bit. And I'm gonna label these probably on paper uh, so that I can keep track. Cause I've got a much bigger mess of wires back here than their video shows. So I'm gonna have to figure it out as I go. All right, so I pulled this green one out. It was just grounded back in here. So I was able to untangle that. This red is a 12 volt, blue is a 12 volt, is coming out of that recall box. So I'm just kind of still untangling it. I may need to actually start the process of removing it so I could scoot this box back and get a little bit more room to figure out what the hell's going on with this mess. Okay, it's obviously hard to film this as I do it, but basically I'm holding this down with you know, the, the uh, grips and just unscrewing the uh, propane hose. Okay, so back inside, I took the rails off. I got some screws out here. It looks like this one's actually a little stripped, so I'll deal with that later. I'm gonna have to pry this one off. But basically my plan is I'm just gonna take this thing out of the hole by like a couple inches so I have a little bit more room in the back to figure out what's happening. Okay, got it out a couple inches. I'm gonna take a look at the back side and see if I have enough room. Okay, a little bit more room to check things out here and figure out what's all this stuff. See, I've got the extra complication too, the fact that I've got the ice maker and their video does not show that. So I'll have to figure it out myself. Okay, so all I'm doing here is draining out the line. I got this glass underneath it, and this is my, from my ice maker. So I'm getting that out of there so I can pick it out. Okay, so we got the water line disconnected. And we got some more wires that I'm not used to, but I think what we've got here is an aftermarket thing. When this thing kept overheating, we actually put in a switch here, which is not normal. And then we spliced it in. So this, these two wires are going up to the top of the stack. We got two fans up there to draw air through. So we're probably not gonna need those anymore. So I'm gonna take these things down. The switch could probably come out, but we'll see. But uh, again, it's just stuff that's different than, uh, than their install video because every rig is different. Okay, it's disconnected back in the back. And then I bent ahead and removed all these screws inside the fins as well as these screws on both sides of the freezer, uh, probably just to prepare for being able to remove the cooling unit after it's laying on the floor. I think that's it. So basically our next step is to see about removing this thing. So I'm gonna see if my wife can help me do it because we're, you know, we're not right on the floor. We're gonna have to lower it down about a foot and I'm gonna put some carpet down or a, a blanket or something so it won't hurt this floor. <sighs> Holy crap. <laughs> So got it out of there. I'm gonna clean up this hole a little bit. You can see the original baffling. I had to cut this wire, but it goes up to these aftermarket fans we put in that we probably will not need anymore. And there's the fridge. So it was definitely special getting it out of there. I'm not gonna lie, it's heavy. So um, what I ended up doing is getting my wife and my two kids and we use this blanket to keep it from hurting the floor. And because my wife was afraid to lift it and hurt herself, we had this, I don't know if you can see it, <laughs> but this black shelf under there that just happened to be just the right height. So I stuck it under there and used it as a lift essentially. And it's now leaning on that with this foam. 
So I think we're good. Um, but definitely getting it back in, I'm either going to need to get another guy to help me or we're going to have to maybe use a jack or something like that because, yeah, getting it, getting it back up there is not going to be as easy as getting it back out. And that was not easy anyway. <laughs> Whew, okay, proceed. Okay, checking in, just removing stuff. I've got the, um, the thing for the uh, ice maker sort of out of the way. Uh, that's the control board and basically I'm just following along with their video here and so far everything's pretty much like it's supposed to be um, So let's press on Okay, just for me. I've got the Let's see Two little white and black wires that come out of this big plug They got these joints and then they go down into this little wire bunch into the fridge So I'm gonna have to disconnect them right here black to black white to white Make sure we can put them back. <laughs> Woo! Okay, the old cooling unit is out. I, I couldn't hold the phone or something and show that, but basically I um, disconnected everything. There's four screws that hold the thing down. Um, the tape was already pretty darn loose, actually. You could tell this fridge needed some maintenance anyway. And getting the wiring out and, and labeling it was a thing. Um, so I sure hope I'll be able to get this all put back together again. Like these things are keyed in in such a way where they should they can only go onto the control board the right way. So I, hopefully I can figure that out. And then a few of them, I, I took some photos to kind of document what goes where. And I also labeled a few things. So hopefully I'll be able to figure this damn thing out. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's moving along. It's... Um, I can't say the job is that bad. It's just that there's some differences with how their video, I mean, their video made it look flawless, of course, because they do it all the time and there were no complications. And in the real world, that's just not the way it works. Um, I mean, I had this entire, let me see if I can show you, this entire bundle of cords. I had to figure out how to disconnect it. And then it was in between the coils in the fridge. So I had to totally disconnect it and work its way out. And so there's always just complications. So anyways, now I want to clean all this stuff up and um, start to prep for the uh, the new one, although that may be tomorrow before we get to that. Okay, so I'm just cleaning up the old uh, thermomastic here with, and uh, get it into a bag, get all this stuff off so we can have a nice clean thing and then I'll be vacuuming it all out. Got to get it off the back of the fins as well. Okay, coming along, got the uh, freezer plates pretty clean, back of the fins. I also took off some thermomastic that was around here uh, on, the, on the foam. And, uh, you know, it took a little tiny bit of foam off in a couple spots, but it won't be a problem because we're gonna be using spray foam and filling everything in there. So, so now what I'm doing is taking the opportunity, because since when do I ever have this thing out like this, to just really clean the entire box get all this crappy tape off and I think I will replace all that gonna clean up back here and then of course I'm gonna clean out the hole because I mean this hell I've never seen the hole this accessible before so and I might take these out because they're just not gonna be necessary anymore this this unit's not gonna get all hot so this is where we stand at the moment. We just got the thing down, door first, down on the floor. Um, pretty much got it cleaned out here. Um, I think it's good enough. Got some stray wires, of course. So this one is for the, you know, where the uh, fan switch goes, but I don't think we're gonna be using that anymore. This is going to the ice maker. Uh, so we'll, we'll get that all set up tomorrow. And then um, got a big old pile of stuff back here. So this will be interesting, you know, I mean, it's, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not an electrician. I did my best to kind of record where this stuff goes and I'm not stupid. <laughs> so hopefully I can get it all put back in the proper place. Uh, I do have a, uh, a diagram here of where things go um, for this control board, which is interesting actually, because as you can see, this is the 1210 even though I'm quite certain I had the 1200 L room. So I don't know what's going on, but clearly that control board is the same as that control board. So I'm just gonna roll with it. And um, 
and get this done. But I mean, the, the, the diagram looks fairly simple. All the, uh, the parts that have to do with um, propane are no longer attached because we're not gonna be using that anymore. So actually, it should be a lot simpler setup back here in the back, actually. Uh, really pretty easy on the maintenance. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Um, we had some areas where there was some rotted tape and stuff, so I replaced it with some new aluminum tape here. And then around the box tomorrow, they actually supplied tape, so I'll use their stuff just to make sure everything is, uh, is right. Then over here, we've got the box and... Uh, cleaned it out, put the thing on. It's gonna obviously be sitting like that overnight. Um, that I don't think we're gonna need anymore. And oh, maybe I'll take these fans out. We'll see, they're, they're not even really connected anymore. So I might as well take these fans out. They're not gonna be necessary. Okay, I think I'm done for today uh, because I don't have, I, basically I've been at it for a while. The other thing is that I don't have really have anybody available to help me do the, the whole dry fit of the new unit. So what I'm going to be doing is just kind of punting until tomorrow morning and we'll get it done. One thing down here, this is the 12-volt uh, wiring coming in from the wall. And I'm hoping that gauge of wire is going to be thick enough. Uh, they said sometimes you have to replace it with a 10 gauge. I can't tell by looking at this if this is a 10 gauge or not. Um, this one, this black wire is a 12, because that was something that, basically this little job is something that I had a guy do when they put those fans in at the top in order to splice the power in. But these these original white and red coming out of the wall are the Coach 12 volt. So um, hopefully that wire will be enough because the alternative is that I'm going to have to figure out how to run new wire all the way to the battery from here, which I don't look forward to. Not exactly sure how I would do it actually, but I'd figure it out. Another thing, because that's not everything goes according to plan, of course, is that this is the old um for LP for the propane. And it was still attached when we started pulling the old one out. You can see we put a nice bend in that bad boy, so that thing's messed up. But given that we're not gonna be using LP anymore, I don't think it's gonna matter. Um if for some reason it did, I could always replace that line. Oops. This here is the old one. Uh, I'm looking at the, that's down there at the bottom and I'm sitting up here at the top. But one thing I noticed is that the damn thing has no fan on the top. I can't believe it. I had this fridge addressed uh, by people um, probably a couple of times. I had to have that fridge pulled out and something done to it. And nobody noticed that I had no fan at the top. This thing's supposed to have a fan mounted right there at the top of those coils. And there was nothing. So basically my stack fans we're the only thing running in the air circulation. I mean, that's just unbelievable. Like, it's just, you, you pay people to do stuff and they're just like, they don't freaking pay any attention. Anyway, it's obviously old, it's rusted. So, uh, good riddance. It'll be nice to uh, put in some new hardware.